Hi everyone! So today I wanted to, at least for this video, I wanted to give a short update on my Russian. And it's going somewhere, but compared to when I did Portuguese, at least right now I am at around, let's check my notebook. So, sorry. Okay. So here is my Russian hours. So right now I'm actually at, I just, you know, I am at 65 plus two, four, six, no, eight. So around 70, 73 hours um, of exposure to Russian. And with my Portuguese, I am right now at over 700 hours. So my point is i wanted to the point that i wanted to make specifically is on my progress at least with russian um i wasn't it's very different from portuguese because first of all the pronunciation the alphabet i actually um I can I, I actually know the alphabet, but sometimes um, some of the some of the things I forget. Um, reading is still a struggle. I have to read more. It's comparing that with Portuguese is like apples and oranges. It's just totally different. And I think people who are studying or trying to learn Korean, Japanese, Arabic, um, Korean, Japanese, Arabic, Mandarin, Hebrew, I mean, any other language that does not use um, Latin alphabet, especially if you're coming from a, if you're a native speaker of um, a language that uses the Latin alphabet. Come to think of it, I am thankful that Filipino uses use the Latin alphabet because if we had our own alphabet, it would be, I think I would have had uh, a different childhood because imagine using, I could imagine using abacada for Filipino and the Latin alphabet for English and all the characters for Mandarin, that would have been school would have been more difficult than it should be and add that and add to that science and mathematics which of course are core core subjects for everyone in the world so yeah going back to russian i'm actually at the point where at least the story that i am listening to I have listened to probably 50 times, but slowly I'm getting words, um, Glava, um, of course, Mama, Papa, uh, Da, Nyet, Panimayo, um, Panimayish, uh, what else? Um, just things that are like greetings, um, uh, Dobre Utra, Dobre Dien, Dobre Vichir, um, Spokoino Nochi, um, my pronunciation could 100% definitely improve. Um, I'm like an infant at this point, and it's a, it's a journey, it's an exciting journey. So, um, I also recently just watched the TED Talk of this guy who, who's much younger than me, of course, um, much younger than me. And he just took an interest in, interest in learning really obscure, maybe not obscure, but I mean languages that not a lot of people like to learn, but because the languages that I learned, uh, that I'm trying to acquire, um, a lot of people speak it, like Portuguese and Russian. And of course, the languages that I already know, English, Mandarin, these are languages that are the top 10 spoken in the world. So chances are people and content uh, people can people that i would meet probably would speak one of these languages and at the same time content online um are available for these languages and it's interesting because even for him 
um, like um, African languages, um, uh, I think um, Indian languages, he actually tried learning them. So that was interesting and it was very encouraging for me because if I'm right now, if I feel so lost in Russian, um, I know that one day I wouldn't be. Like, it just takes more time. It's, and I am glad that I started with Portuguese last year um, because first, at least that language, I would be able to keep alive with my friend who speaks Portuguese. And at the same time, I've already proven that I'm able to learn a another language out of um, out of high school or out of um, a a formal um, and traditional um, learning institution. So basically, learning this language on my own um, through YouTube books and all all that good stuff right now so I am very encouraged and I I'm still enjoying the language and I think because of my strong um, interest in Russian Russian culture the country that I have not been to um, I don't know why, but I have been to other places in lot of lots of other places in Europe. But um, R- Russia has been one of those countries that eventually I would be able to go to after after this pandemic is no longer a threat, and it is exciting that I'm able to have this time to actually learn it. Um, yeah, and. I just wanted a landmark to where I am is the same as what I did uh, months ago with my Portuguese when all I knew were phrases here and there until eight months later when I'm able to actually um, speak phrases and sentences and um, basically do monologues on for YouTube even if um, these are structured um, monologues but honestly I've forgotten like 50% of what I said because I just basically memorized a lot of the things but retention of um, the words that I use if I encounter it in my daily reading I would say okay I remember that um, I remember I remember the word um, apoyar or I remember the word um, or <laughs> I don't even know what it means. <laughs> it just came up. Just I just what's Dejbavar? But and then so I'm expecting to feel the same way at least for Russian and because there's this really strong um interest in the culture and the people and I guess it's because my ancestors are from China and although my family like the most recent history is from the south of China but I have relatives who are quite tall so it wouldn't be impossible that some of my relatives or some of my ancient and my ancestors like great 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 whatever grandfather grand grandparent um, it's possible that they would have been from the north and they because they are connected landmass so i wouldn't know if probably i would haven't had an ancestor who was probably with um genghis khan or like the people of um yeah like genghis khan or kublai khan and going around and um probably well, basically what I'm saying is I might have ancestors who have lived in Russia at some point. And I've also recently learned that Russia is this huge, um, even after the Soviet, the fall of the Soviet Union, but especially even before, during this, the time that the Soviet Union was intact, um, 
the people of Russia are so diverse that they're not all what's this ethnic uh, like in terms of race they're not all like Caucasian they're not all white um, in this part towards the east um, like if just the globe and yeah, um, Alaska is here and Europe is here this portion there are a lot of people who actually look South Asian um, so that's really interesting because all I especially in um, Hollywood the Western US media um, Russians always like tall scary looking people um, and because that's the image that they show so I'm kind of lucky that I am actually in this side of the world where I can see that okay Chinese people aren't like what they show over there and people in Russia probably aren't because as my parents told me when they traveled um, before when they were younger when they traveled around and they did they were able to get to I think the most northern part of China Harpin and at that place people they, they they're like the people there um, some of them look mixed um, so and then after I saw the YouTube the video on the different types of the different ethnicities and the different groups of people in Russia it all makes sense so I think it's one of those things that that's why I find um, uh, Russia so interesting the language and the culture and hopefully one day be able to travel and see all the different parts I'd probably have to start and see um, Moscow and St. Petersburg uh, and probably some of the other places next time so that's where I am at right now after babbling for around 12 minutes um, yeah thanks for watching if you've gotten this far and I hope maybe you can join me in my journey with um, languages and learn the Russian language as well. Пока-пока!